Hello, my name is Janko and I am from the Tactical R&D team and I am going to show you our Azure Blob storage connector for secure transport. A quick introduction about Azure Blob. This is uh, Microsoft's object storage solution for the cloud. It is optimized for storing massive amounts of unstructured data, for example text or binary data. It is ideal for many purposes such as storing files for distributed access, streaming video and audio, storing data for backup and restore, disaster recovery, archiving and many many others. Our connector allows secure transport to exchange files with Azure Blob Storage Service, allowing upload, download with multiple patterns and different post-transmission actions. Our Azure Blob connector is built using Microsoft Software Development Kit using Azure Storage REST API. Let me quickly show you how to install it. So first of all, we navigate to Secure Transport installation folder and then we go to Plugins and then we go to the Transfer Sites folder. Once we have downloaded the plugin from the Marketplace, we put the zip file here. As we can see, it is the Secure Transport plugin site Azure Blob.zip and we unzip it in this folder. Once unzipped, we, go, we are going to see that we have Axway Site Azure Blob folder and Axway Site Azure Blob jar. We go back to the bin folder and here we need to reboot the secure transport server using the stop all and, and start all commands. Now that the server is restarted, we are going to log into the Secure Transport Administration panel to see in the server walk if everything has been installed successfully and if our plugin is running. So we log in as admin. We go to the server walk. We wait and then we search for blob. Unfortunately, we don't find anything about Blob here. So we go to the next page and we see eight results here. We go to the first one and as you can see, we have plugin loaded, configuration, custom site, taxway, secure transport, plugins, Azure Blob site, protocol label, Azure Blob storage, etc. And it means that we have successfully installed the plugin. In order for us to make the Azure Blob connector work, we need the following from Secure Transport site. We need an application, which could be a basic application or, an adv or advanced routing. In our case, we are going to use a basic application. Then we need an account. Afterwards, we need to create a Blob transfer site. And at the end, we need a subscription. So let's get going. First of all, I'm going to create an application. As I said, it's going to be a basic application. So here, right, Azure Blob up. And I choose basic application, then I create it. Here, you can see that it's created. Then I go to the account submenu and I create a new account. I'm going to give it the name of uh, uh, Blob account. We have some mandatory fields here, so UID and GID. Then here we need to input an existing folder, so it's ST home in our case. Uh, one thing is important here, if you want this account to be able to submit file transfers using the transfers RESTful API, you need to click here and check this box. In my case, I'm going to do it. I'm going to enter the password, confirm it, and click Save. You can see that the account is now created, and we are going to create a transfer site, add new, blob site, and then from the transfer protocol submenu, we need to pick Azure Blob Storage. In case this is missing in your in your secure transport, it means that something went wrong during the installation of the plugin. Now that we have selected the Azure 
Azure Blob Storage from the menu, we are going to see some new site settings appear. So let me quickly explain how it's going to work. So we have created a demo account in Azure to showcase the plugin, but we are not going to provide in-depth Azure training. So we assume that you have already configured this part and we are going to simply and quickly explain what we need to make the plugin work. So from Azure site, we need Azure Blob Storage account with Blob Storage service enabled. This storage account can have one or more containers each having one or more blobs. This picture shows and explains the relationship between the Azure entities. So to put things to put things in a perspective, we can say that containers organize blobs similarly to how root folders organize normal files. So for our transfer site to work, it is going to require a connection string. And in Azure you can obtain it by navigating to first the portal.azure.com, then log into your account, go to storage accounts, select storage account, and then click on access keys. So there you're going to see a connection string which is going to look something like this. And once you insert it into the connection string field, you see that it is going to pre -pop to auto-populate the account name, the account key, in the, and the endpoint suffix. Another way to access the Azure Blob Storage is to have a link to the so-called public storage container reference. And the difference here is that if you have this one only, it is going to give you only read access to the files. Thus, it doesn't require an access key. But at the same time, if you have only a public storage container reference, you are not going to be able to upload any files, you are going to have read-only access and you will be able to download the files only. Have in mind that in Azure it is a, con it is a setting on a container level, so if you need to allow, to allow this, you need to go and set it up in Azure first. Now that we have set up the connection string or the public storage container reference, we are going to move on and insert our Azure Blob container. It's very important that the name of the container is the same here in ST configuration and in Azure itself, because otherwise it's not going to work unless we have this create blob container option checked, which is going to create the blob automatically in Azure in case it's missing. So the name of our container is ST demo container. And then we need to choose the blob type. So Azure Storage offers three types of blobs, block, append, and page blobs. They have different usage and block blobs store text and binary data up to 4.7 terabytes. They are made up of blocks of data and can be managed individually. Append blobs are made up of blocks similar to the previous ones, the block blobs, but they are optimized for append operations. So, for example, append blobs are ideal for scenarios such as logging data from virtual machines. And last but not least are the page blobs. Uh, they store random access files up to 8 terabytes in size. It's very important that the page blobs need to be in chunks that are multiple of 512 bytes and that's the reason when we click you see that for block blob and append blob you don't we don't have it but for page blobs we have the option to add zero pad which is going to actually automatically round up the size of the file to a valid page blob size which as we mentioned must be a multiple of 512 bytes. It's very important also to mention here in the configuration menu that for most of the options you see here we have two tips and when you click on those question marks you will be able to see additional information for each field and not only that for some of them for example here in the patterns mostly you have the option to click on one of the examples that are explained in the tooltip and it's going to automatically put it in the required field for you, which is pretty convenient. So let's move on to the transfer settings. We have the option to use HTTPS and to verify the certificate for this site. 
So as you can see here, the connection string includes a protocol itself. But it's important to notice that this connection string is not persisted in the database. It's only parsed and then its attributes, the account name, the account key and the endpoint suffix are persisted and saved into the database. And the protocol, of course, as you can see here, when we have HTTPS in the connection string, it is automatically transferred here and the use HTTPS option is selected. It is also important to notice that the account key, which you see here, is always encrypted. It is saved in the database and it's encrypted because it represents actually sensitive data. And there is another option to verify the certificate for this site. It is usually selected. The reason you might want to unselect this is if you say, let's say, install an Azure instance locally and you don't have trusted certificates, or generally speaking, if there is a case when you don't have trusted certificates, you can uncheck this so it's going to allow you to transfer the files and to access the host names without trusting the certificates. Before we continue to the download settings, I'm going to quickly mention the network zone option. It allows you, if you have already configured a network zone in secure transport with specific proxy settings, you can use this option here to make the transfer site use this network zone. So next step is to configure the download settings. Download folder is actually from which folder in Azure we are going to download files. We have several options here. First is the recursive download, which is going to allow us also to use the preserve folder, folder structure options. Option. Difference is that if you use recursive download without using a preserve, the preserve folder structure, the secure transport plugin is going to download all of your files regardless of their location in Azure and is going to put them into one folder. But if you use the preserve folder structure option, it is going to preserve the, the folder tree that you have created in Azure locally when it downloads the files. So for our demonstration, we are going to put a single slash here, which is going to download all the files inside the container, in our case, AST demo container that we configured already. And it is going to download all the blobs, all the files, and it is going to preserve the folder structure. Next are the file name pattern settings. And here the general idea is that with patterns we can download only the files we need by writing expressions, which in turn are going to give us more precise requirements for the files we are going to download. So let me give you an example. Let's say that we need to download all the files that are with a txt file name. For this we can use the so-called file globbing. It allows us to, uh, to write wildcard expressions and we are going to write wildcard.txt and now it is going to download all txt files that exist in our root folder or in Azure terms in our container. For more details about the regular expressions that you can write, you can open this very detailed tooltip and you can use the examples and put them directly in the field or you can also use the examples and then write your own expressions to satisfy your requirements for file download. The metadata map is something very interesting. First of all, let me tell you that Azure and Secure Transport support files metadata. Metadata is consists of attributes and values. So for example, we have one file and we give it a specific attribute, let's say created by user, and then we insert the user. So let's say created by secure created by user in our case is going to be equal to secure transport. And if we have 
software, specific software, which requires a specific attribute to work, a distinctive file attribute, you can now use this metadata map to move such files between Azure and Secure Transport without any problems. In Secure Transport, these metadata and the attributes are called flow attributes and they can be used also in specific advanced routing transfer flows. One example with X-Way projects is that you can use this metadata and the specific attributes required by software such as Decision Insight or Sentinel for logging and reporting purposes. Again, a lot of information is provided in the tooltip and we are also going to demonstrate how it works later in the video. Next, we are going to move on to the upload settings. So here, the first option we have is the Allow Override Upload folder. This one is actually a bit tricky because it's related to the advanced routing and it allows the advanced routing send to partner step to overwrite the upload folder that we configure here in this transfer site. The next one is the allow overwrite existing file option which means that if there is an existing file in Azure and we upload a file with the same name it is going to be overwritten. By default this is turned off to avoid deleting files without knowing about it. Then next we have the upload folder. If we again write only a slash here it is going to upload in the container root. In our case we are going to specify the name of the upload folder to be upload and there is no option for this but the default behavior of this connector is to create the folder in Azure if it doesn't exist. So now if there is no upload folder in our container root it's going to be created. The metadata map as we explained previously works the same way but here it is going to work from ST to Azure. Now let's take a look at the post transmission settings. First of all these are uh, post the PTAs or the post transmission actions are actions that are applied after a successful upload or download but on the remote service. In our case this is Azure. Some commonly used cases are to add a timestamp to the downloaded blob or to delete the downloaded blob or for example once you upload a blob to Azure to have it moved to a specific folder. So let's take a look at all the options here. First of all in the send options we have the send file as. This one here can be used for example as we said to add a timestamp. So instead of sending the file.txt we add a timestamp to it so in Azure it appears with a date for example. The no action means that on success we are not going to do anything. Move rename file to is going to move or rename the file based on our needs. So let's say that we want to upload a file and once it's successfully uploaded to move it to a specific folder we can specify this here and once we select this option we are going to see the allow to overwrite existing file checkbox to appear. If we click this again as, as previously it is going to allow us to overwrite the existing file in Azure and write on top of it, so to speak. Our file is going to override it and the old file will be deleted if it is moved in a folder where such a file already exists. Something specific for Azure is that if there is a snapshot of a file, Azure is not going to allow you to delete it. We have this option here and if you are sure about that you can check it and it is going to delete the snapshot first and then it's going to delete the file itself. Be careful with this one. Then we have the receive options which are absolutely the same except this one delete destination file. Logically it doesn't exist in the send options because we don't want to delete what we just uploaded but here we have the options to delete the destination file 
once we download it. So let's say we have a file in Azure, we have a blob, we download it locally in the ST and we delete the file that we just downloaded. We can do this by using this check mark, the rest are the same. Now let's move quickly to the advanced settings. So the first three options here, the cipher suits the SSL protocol and the enabled SSL protocols are applied only when we are using a secure connection. The cipher suits are a set of the available cipher suits which our transfer site will use when connecting to Azure. The SSL protocol in this case is TLS by default and the enabled SSL protocol is TLS version 1.2 which right now at this moment is the latest and greatest and considered secure. Then we have the receive and connect timeouts. The receive timeout is the timeout which is going to measure the latency which appears between the receive transfers and if this latency reaches this amount it's going to stop the receive. And the connect timeout is more general. It is going to define the time until the initial connection is established and if you cannot establish a connection within in this case by default 25 seconds the connection will be cancelled we don't encourage you to put very limited numbers here for example if you put the connect timeout to three seconds it might never allow you to connect so be careful with those two now that we have explained how to configure the transfer site Let's finalize our configuration so we can save it. I'm going to use the defaults first and I'm going to adjust the settings during the demonstration later. So here our download folder is going to be the root folder. Our file name pattern is going to be everything or a wildcard. Our upload folder is going to be upload. And for send and receive post transmission settings, we are going to use no action for now. And then I'm going to click save. So now our blob transfer site is ready and I'm going to create a subscription now. The subscription is basically how we subscribe our account to the basic application so that it will be able to push and pull to the transfer site by using this subscription folder that we are now going to make. So first of all we select our Azure Blob app basic application we subscribe this account to it. And then here we are going to make two subscriptions. First of all, the subscription folder is the folder that the it is the folder name and it is going to appear in the account's home folder in ST. So it is Azure Blob Who first for download. The only thing that we are going to set here is automatically retrieve files from our already created blob site. We are not going to change any settings here and then we are going to add this subscription. Now it appears here and we are going to create another one again with the same application. We subscribe to it. We are going to create Azure blob push for uploading and this time we are going to use only the send file directory to which is going to send our files directly to the blob site or our transfer site and so we click on the transfer site, we click add and now we have two subscriptions, one for pull and one for push. With this our configuration settings are completed and now we are going to proceed with the demonstration. Now that we have created those two subscriptions for and push. Let's go and demonstrate how actually the Azure connector is working. So first of all I'm going to show you what we have created in Azure. Here you can see on the left side we have Azure storage accounts and the ST Azure demo is our storage account. Then the ST demo container is our container. And we have created three folders uh, so that we have some kind of folder hierarchy. Sublevel 1, 2 and 3. And in sublevel 1, 
first of all in the container we have one txt file then in sublevel 1 we have one png file and one txt file in sublevel 2 we have another txt file and in sublevel 3 we have blob with, meta with metadata txt file which has the following metadata properties so it is it has created by which equals to tactical R&D it has edited by which equals to secret user and it has metadata is working which equals to but of course so our purpose when we show the download transfer is that we are going to preserve this metadata and show this in ST as well so let's start working on this first of all we are going again to the transfer sites we select the blob site and we are going to modify the download settings a bit so the download folder remains slash which means download everything from the root but now we are going to click on recursive and then on preserve folder structure and now it's going to download everything and preserve the structure we are going to use the wildcard pattern means download everything and on the metadata map we are going to click on the tooltip and use the last one uh, which is going to map flow attributes in secure transport to the value that corresponds to the value of the remote item metadata with let's say key one so we are going to add this three times because we have three metadata attributes and we are going to name them properly so here we have created by edited by and metadata is working so created by edited by and metadata is working and these are going to be equal to created by in Azure edited by and metadata is working so let me zoom the idea here is that on the left side we have the metadata that is going to be stored in ST and for consistency we are giving it the same name that we have in Azure I'm not going to touch any other options right now I'm going to click Save now that we have updated the transfer site I'm going to go to the subscription in order for us to actually retrieve the files I go to the pool subscription and I click on retrieve files now once this is completed we go to the file tracking after one refresh we can still see that the files are in progress then we refresh again click on file tracking and here the green check mark shows us that these files have been downloaded now we are going to log in to one to the secure transport with our new account which is blob account the one that we created and associated with this transfer site we sign in and here we can see in the Azure blob pool folder that we have sublevel 1 with the txt file we have sublevel 2 with the png and readme file and we have sublevel 3 with the nodes file and we have in sublevel 3 the blob with metadata txt now we want to check if the blob with metadata txt file has the metadata preserved so we are going to open putty again so we open putty we have already logged into the server and now we are going to execute one script so this script is going to get the additional metadata for the file here we have selected the path to the file as you can see it is ST home blob account Azure blob pool sublevel 1 sublevel 2 sublevel 3 blob with metadata and as you can see here the names begin with flow so we have flow metadata is working but of course flow created by tactical R&D 
and flow edited by secret user. We go back to the Azure File Explorer and we can see that we have created by, edited by and metadata is working and all of them have been transferred successfully to the secure transport. So, and for our next demonstration, I have already deleted, as you can see here in the PuTTY window, all the files from our Azure Blob Pool directory. And what we are going to do is we are going to show you how to download files using an expression. In our case, we are going to download our only PNG file by using wildcard.png. And then I'm going to show you how to use a post transmission action to delete the file, to delete the blob from Azure once that it has been successfully downloaded. So first of all, we are going to go to the secure transport and we are going to edit again our transfer site, the blob site. And in our case, we are going to keep this download folder as root, but I'm going to deselect the preserve folder structure because we want this file to be put directly into the root and then we want in the file name pattern to insert wildcard.png I'm going to remove the metadata because we've already shown this and for the post transmission actions we go to the receive options and delete destination file I'm going to save the transfer site settings and again I'm going to navigate to subscriptions, select the pool one and click on retrieve files now. Once I click on retrieve files now, it has already initiated the pool. I'm going to go to the file tracking, file search and we can see that our image.png file has been successfully downloaded. Now let's see our protocol commands. I'm going to click on the image.png. It's important here to have Azure Blob selected as protocol. And you'll be able to see here that we have these protocol commands. They are here. First of all, we have 200 OK, then we have the delete command, which has been accepted, and it means that our file has been deleted. But of course, we're going to double check, so I'm going to close this window, and then I'm going to go to my user account, I go to your files, Azure Block Pool, and here everything is deleted. I have only the PNG file. Again, I'm going to go to Azure, and here I'm going to go to sublevel 2, refresh again if needed, and there is no PNG file here anymore. For our last demonstration, I'm going to show you how to upload a file from ST to Azure Blob Storage, and we are going to have metadata again and we are going to have post transmission action and this time we are going to move the file and to append the current timestamp to its name. So let's go and do it. First of all in Secure Transport Administrative Panel I am going to edit the transfer site again. I go to the upload settings. On the metadata map I am going to use the first option which is going to put the original file name as, a meta as, as metadata for the file. Then here on the post transmission settings I am going to click the move rename file to and again I am going to use this time the third example. I am going to rename this from archive to moved and I am going to change the dollar to underscore. What is going to happen here? is okay actually not the dollar I'm going to change the slash to underscore and get the dollar back so what is happening here is we are going to move the file to folder moved which is going to be under our root folder and then we are going to put the date in a format day month year 
then we are going to have an underscore and the file name this is the expected result I'm clicking on save to save the transfer site settings and now I'm going to go to the user interface I have already prepared a file, it's called hollywood.txt I upload it here once this is finished I go again to the file tracking search and as we can see this account has been successfully uploaded hollywood.txt then I'm going to check Azure I refresh here and under the ST demo container now we have the boot folder with the Hollywood TXT file when I check its properties I expect to see its original name under metadata and as you can see original name has a value of Hollywood TXT with this upload demonstration our demonstration part is complete and also this is the end of the video I hope it's been informative for you and I would like to thank you for watching.